Morning everyone. What a miserable morning. We're trying to beat the weather. Um, one of my subscribers, Adnan from Holland, said to me last week, when are you going to be flying helis? So this uh, video is really for Adnan. So tune in, see what I'm flying. Roll the intro. Yeah, as I said, very, very bleak morning. We're trying to beat the rain. Um, one, one of my YouTube subscribers, Adnan, who's really into helicopters, recently crashed his Blade 330S and just asked me a little bit of advice about things to rebuild it, and he's rebuilt it successfully, which is great. And now he's actually thinking of buying himself a kit, and I just advised him, you know, that I think, like, T-Rex helicopters are very, very good value for money, but at the end of the day, it's, you know, your own personal choice. But then I thought, right, okay, I'm going to have a go at flying one of my helicopters. I haven't flown this one for about three months and I haven't flown helis for about two months. So I'm definitely going to be rusty, so I'm going to take it nice and easy. Um, it's my Align T-Rex 470 LP. The LP stands for plastic. It's a 470 LP plastic, M metal, and, and then there's... LT which is for the torque tube instead of the drive belt for the tail so that that's all those things mean lovely helicopter <clears throat> very powerful runs on success um, anything really from a success 1200 mAh up to a 1600 I think but it's got to be quite a specific size battery because it goes into a dedicated battery channel between the, the main frames so you know you need to uh, just be careful what, what size you buy apart from that you know I've had a little bit of a problem with this one in that the bearings in the tail supporting the tail shaft disintegrated. Thank God I wasn't up in the air. But it's like everything, you know, you, you buy these things, they've got to be maintained, they've got to be oiled, you know, um, and you've just got to look after them. But uh, there you go. So it's not really light yet, but because I'm so rusty, I'm just going to have a little gentle hover and, and see how I get on from there. So here we go. Time is set for three minutes. Now the controller in this one is a Micro Beast Plus fly wireless controller and I can definitely tell that I'm feeling uh, very very rusty so stick a nice steady just ease myself into it Now myself and Cheryl actually stand a good possibly nine or ten feet away from where I take off and land. So it might not look like that on the video, but obviously, oh, I've got a bug biting me. Obviously, um, you know, you don't want to stand too close to this. I wait there, sir. Got bugs all over my face. Okay. Oh, sorry, guys. Getting uh, 
eating alive this morning. Yeah, I'm definitely feeling very, very rusty, so. Unfortunately, with the helicopters, it's not just, just about the building because the set, the process with these flyby controllers and all the different angles on the main blades is, is immense. Okay, just getting fit again, Captain. Oh, okay, cut him off. You know, the set, the process is absolutely immense. And, you know, it takes a lot of studying, so as you know, exactly what you're doing there's no easy way of getting around it you know it just takes a lot of practice and like trial and error really when you're learning about these things uh, it feels like i haven't flown a helicopter for about six months actually feeling very very rusty Okay, so the last three minutes was very quick. Let's get it back on the pad. We're going to just bring it down to low rate. Yeah, I tell you, at this moment in time, my thumbs are just not working, so... Get it back down. No, it's just not, doing, it's not happening today. Very, very, uh, very, very rusty. Okay, I'm gonna put it down. There we go. Oh, bit bouncy. Spot on. Well, there you go. As I said, I knew I was gonna be rusty. Um, unfortunately, when you're flying fixed wing and then you come back to flying a helicopter it just feels completely different than vice versa um, what was happening to me there apart from getting eaten alive by all these pesky flies uh, I was forgetting to turn the tail um, obviously when you're flying fixed wing you don't use the tail or the rudder or whatever you want to call it that much you know you you do use it but you don't use it as much as when you're flying a helicopter and I was actually then forgetting you know that to get the heli to go where I wanted to I've got to constantly be uh, inputting into the tail so uh, yeah very very rusty but there you go while the rain's holding off I'll have another flight okay then second flight let's hope I'm not as rusty as the first one Now three minutes is not a very long time, but uh, as I said, it's a 6S heli and uh, it really, really tracks these batteries quite quickly, so... I mean, for such a sort of like medium-sized heli, it's actually quite powerful because it is running on the 6S. Uh, in comparison, a T-Rex 450 used to be on a 3S, so... What I'm doing now is constantly reminding myself to uh, input that rudder.
and I've spoken about it many a time but the process of flying a heli is like balancing the ball bearing on a mirror your fingers are going constantly altering the heli, correcting your movements put in the rudder input your cyclic controls, leaning the heli forwards when you want to go forwards leaning it to the side and inputting with the rudder and then obviously then pushing forward when you want to fly forward rudder to turn plus then you've got to do the cyclic in the way that you want to turn or the way you want the heli to lean so for those that don't fly helis there's a lot to it you know there really is Okay, so there's my three minutes. Well, that was a lot better. But that three minutes come along very, very quickly. Okay, much better that time. Much more controlled. Yeah, I was starting to, you know, get the feeling back then and knowing what each thumb should have been doing. <coughs> um, looked great flying around this T-Rex 470. I mean, it's a stunning helicopter. Um, and, you know, what I, what I often say to people is, you buy a ready-to-fly helicopter, don't get me wrong, I've bought, I've got three ready-to-fly helicopters and, and they're fantastic. But when you buy yourself a kit and you unbox it and you look at all those component parts and there's quite a few in a kit and then you start <clears throat> uh, researching how it's got to be put together, then you start putting it together, thread locking it correctly, putting all the thrust races together correctly in the head and the tail. You know, and then there's the setup process and the feeling you get then when you see that thing that you've built just pop up into the air, sometimes successfully, sometimes not successfully. It doesn't matter, you know, that's the learning curve. But when you see something you've built take to the air and fly, that, you know, that feeling you get is second to none. So, you know, if you're into helis, and you're thinking of having a go and you're thinking of taking a plunge of building a kit then trust me it's one of the best feelings in the world to see that completed heli set up and fly in and fly in nicely there you go adnan anyway a little bit of a t-rex 470 sort of like fest for you and i hope you enjoy the videos thanks for watching bye bye